Hey everyone. Hi. Hi. Here we are recording. What do you like this setup? I like the setup way better. Yeah. 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 Because I can look at you mm-hmm. without yeah. like right. constantly turning side right. to you side. Need, like don't need your I feel like we're doing the mm-hmm. head on a swivel thing. Mm-hmm. Wahey guru. I like this. Wahey guru. Wahey guru. Yeah. It's too much. I like don't it. pull this me is into good. it. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stay grounded. We gotta, stay we grounded. got an hour to go. <laughs> <laughs> to stay grounded. <laughs> oh, I like this. this feels Fingers good. to the earth. <laughs> I love it. This mm-hmm. is good. Yeah, I think this is good. I like the flow. I'm shaking it. And up I think a bit. that when we when we have four people, it'll be great too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Nice flow. Keep it. I the mean, flow. I think we could even fit five if we really need to, but we yeah. have to figure out the. We don't have five outlets. Ah. So mm, that would good be tricky. Point. Five people. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> More people often don't make something better. <laughs> well, More laughs. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on the scenario. I guess. Um, <laughs> how's everyone doing this morning? Good. Afternoon? Good. It's one of those things where it's about that time of day where I don't know what time of day it is. I've just been saying good day lately. <laughs> oh, instead of like good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Or good day. Good, good day. It's, it's a good habit because I, si- I said good morning yesterday when I started class and I'm like, oh. Like, at least three of our students are in Europe. Oh, in mm. the Kundalini Warrior Program. So oh. I'm like, it is most definitely not morning for you guys. No, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So the time zone math thing. It's good day. Good day. Good day. To well, you, sir. Good day. It's Unless you say also it with attitude. Like, I don't know. It feels like fall. Like you know, like good day. You're outside. Just <laughs> <laughs> that's it. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, b- I believe you, but. Yeah, well, but there's also the negative thank you. connotation. Well, I was saying it could be a greeting or a parting. Mm-hmm. So you say true. good day. I say oh, good yeah. day. Good, good day, day to you, yeah, sir. Usually, if it's less less positive as a parting, mm. eh, maybe not. Good day. All right. I like tip it. of the hat. I think right. Let's go back to the old times. There's, you know. I think we should try to Some incorporate it. Something's not wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> Olden times. <laughs> well, I, like I don't know, but. Sure. Some of the vernacular. I know. As soon as I said that, there's like 10 million things that popped in my head. (laughs) That was not great about the (laughs) the before times. The before times. I did (laughs) see a thing that was talking about some like 1920s slang. Mm. 1920s, Mm. 1930s slang. Yeah. And only one of them landed for me that I was like, I'm going to bring this back. What is it? Hotsy totsy. Hotsy totsy. <laughs> what does that mean? It means like it's good. It's great. Okay. That is like, hotsy totsy. Like we could be like, how's your day? Hotsy totsy. Oh. I was a hotsy totsy night last night. I love it. I oh say we try goodness. it. Let's, hotsy totsy. Let's bring it to trivia tonight. Okay. Test it out with the team. We'll we do don't it. tell them. We just say we're going to use it. Okay. We just we just start using it. Yep. And we'll see how they react to it. I love it. It's gonna you two always amaze me with trivia. It's like ongoing. Weekly. Yeah. Weekly yeah. commitment, something that you enjoy doing. Gets you to be with other people. Must yeah. Get your brain going. It's also, yeah, that's it's also a uh, a light mental sparring type yeah. thing where it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, love, I do love that. Well, I think it's had this whole visual of mental sparring. <laughs> <laughs> well, it speaks to our earth placements, too. It does. I think, yeah. you know, like my Capricorn moon <clears throat> that isn't exactly competitive. Mm-hmm. But enjoys knowing the things. Oh, I get super competitive. I love it. Yeah. Like, I love... And and, in an actual liking the competition, not like when someone is described as competitive, Mm -hmm, it usually mm -hmm. is just code for they're an asshole. Oh, Yeah. yeah. But I like... If we're losing, okay, we're losing by 200 points going into the half. I'm like, I love this. Like, we mm, need to get yeah. things right. We need to use the bonus. Like, let's. we need to get the double ups. Like, I just love that part of, like, let's claw back. Or, like, Hearing like yes. Yeah. Or, like, when we're in no. the lead, <laughs> and it's like, we have a target on our back. We got to stay sharp. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to beat us. And it's just like that. It's, I don't know. It's fun. Mm-hmm. And it's because it, like, means nothing. There's nothing at right, stake here. Right. There's nothing really. <laughs> it's all right. illusory. Uh-huh. Yeah, nothing at stake. Points and maybe a gift card certificate for next week mm. <laughs> and that's about it but mm. yeah yep. and i also nice. like so trivia is at a brewery and um i don't like i think beer is disgusting um it just tastes so gross to you me. could just say you don't like beer i don't like it okay well i had one a couple weeks ago it's weird it was weird <laughs> it was weird i just i don't 
like it's not happy in my mouth but i do like when matt's breath smells like beer that is interesting um so i don't know i like the smell of it yeah but the taste is off-putting so (laughs) when we're at trivia and everyone else is drinking beer i get a spritz we do is what they call it Mm. it is seltzer seltzer yeah Yeah. it's seltzer and cranberry juice i love that yeah (laughs) Oh my god! That's what I get to, and I, and there's a little bit like I look forward to it, which makes no sense because we have these ingredients at home. It's true at all times. Well, yeah, no, but and you're getting it at a brewery. I'm getting so it at a brewery. It's like a big that tall cup, and mental thing cold. of like, yeah, you know, that re- that feeling in the body of yeah. You know, just, I mean, because refreshing spirits, it's refreshing, yeah, it's a bubbly a spirit, right? Yeah. So and it's the atmosphere. It's like being out. Mm-hmm. It's that social. It's our time that we like to be social mm. and the other thing i like about it is they don't serve food there so oh, okay. um you can bring your own food like oh, you can't nice. bring your own drinks but you can bring your own food so you can bring snack food we matt makes a giant thing of popcorn yeah yeah it's deep popcorn oh so where's good. the popcorn <laughs> where's the popcorn? of course that wouldn't sound great on the mic but <laughs> <laughs> There's All a right. reason on the video podcast you don't see many people snacking. Uh, Unless yeah. you're Brad Pitt. <laughs> Unless you're I'd Brad be Pitt. turning on and off my mic. <laughs> mm. um, other than that, we're in October. It's my favorite month, partially because it's my birth birthday month. month. So that's yep. exciting. It is. I was reflecting on this earlier today, too. How October is like the best month. It's almost like Do tell you, can, more. <laughs> you can qualify or quantify mm. why October is so good. Tell us. Um, well, let's see. Let's list all the reasons yeah, what are your we got s- going for it. It's finally fall, so like it's starting to really cool down. It's been in the seventies, but like this weekend, it's like sixties. Mm-hmm. So there's that sweater weather. Finally, right? Finally, yeah. stop sweating our behinds off. Mm. Um, the, co- the, the like the the you know coziness mm-hmm. is starting to click in. Right, our bodies know it's time to be cozy. Now, from a sports point of view. Um, the NFL season is four weeks in, mm-hmm. so stuff is like starting to shape up and be meaningful. Mm-hmm. And it's baseball playoffs. October mm-hmm. baseball is like the best. Mm-hmm. So those two awesome things mush together like layers of a shepherd's pie. Okay, love yeah. it. Another fall thing. Yeah. How yeah, good does that definitely. sound? Definitely. Right oh, it sounds so good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. A pot pie mm, right? or something oh. of that. Some mashed potatoes. Pies. Oh, sweet potato. I hate sweet potatoes. Oh, sweet potato. Everyone loves sweet potatoes but me. Maybe it's my Love palate. I don't know. I think your Some mom butter. doesn't like sweet potatoes either. Oh, honey. Yeah? Honey on it. Ooh. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> sweet <laughs> potato. Right. So any other reason why October is the best, best month? Well, uh, I mean, I would say that it. some people might be thinking of October as being Libra season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Libra time. Okay. Mm-hmm. True. But really, it's just pre-Scorpio season. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> for Scorpio. the pre-season. For those that are listening and don't know, Jeannie and I are both Scorpios. Yes. So, uh-huh. Yes. So you're just like on deck, waiting in the wings. We're, yeah. I mean, it's all year, really. <laughs> We're just like, everyone <laughs> is really prepping right now well, yeah, I mean, for Scorpio season. It's and, not- you know, spooky, I'm sorry, spooky yeah. season. Mm. You know, you see these things in your threads start to come through. Right. Spooky season. and. <laughs> People put out their fall decorations or, you know, Halloween decorations if they tune into that. Well, because do you know what this time of year is really like mm-hmm. leading up to Samhain and and then from Samhain to Yule? Like, in my opinion, all of that is Scorpio season. And are you just doing this like when you say your ber- November is your birth month? So you stretch out your birthday for an entire month. You're like, well, I've Scorpio never done season that. Oh, I've really never done that. But I think that this I I woke up october 1st i said rabbit rabbit and i said this is gonna be my birth month there you go which is usually like i don't even you know celebrate my day to the fullest and Uh -uh. i think that i'm just gonna be with it for the birthday month yeah um well i think that this is the time of year where everyone else in the world Mm. that isn't blessed with scorpio as their sun Mm. moon or rising Mm -hmm. gets to cosplay as a Scorpio. Oh, well, oh, well said. Okay. You know, they get to try it out. They'd be like, I'm going to buy some skeletons. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to wear dark colors. <laughs> I am going to embrace my emo side. Right. Is emo it, still a thing? Uh, I think it's probably diverged or like. Yeah, it, it may have know. become several it's different things. It's called something Because yeah. it was like goth and then it was yeah. like emo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I forgot goth. So, yeah. I think I just maybe stick with goth. I don't know. Maybe it's. The bring back goth. Yeah. 
I, I don't think it went anywhere. I think it's still there. Well, I think it's, it's because just the, the elder millennials are celebrating became, their gothness. It became less mainstream, so then it's like it's right up their alley. That's exactly what they're going for. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's, right. so here it's we are. Pre Scorpio so we're season in, in October. Spring training for Scorpio season. <laughs> yes, <laughs> love it. Stay tuned for more. Mm. <laughs> um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. No, no, today it's about the chakras. Yeah. Now chakras. I'm curious as to the angle. Like, what about the chakras? How are we going to do this? Mm. Someone, well, some people who are way more knowledgeable about that, about them than I am. Well, it might be a good segue in the sense of like it is fall time. We've changed of seasons, and with change of seasons, like we start to notice things differently. And so, you know, how can we adjust? How can we shift? And you know, to me, it does also tune into the chakras. So. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But we could definitely, I mean, we can stay at like a playful surface level, I think, of the chakras and like where Mm -hmm. they show up in our day to day lives. Mm -hmm. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, I think if we go into the space of like chakras are energetic wheels of, you know, vibrational light color, like people experience them differently. People don't experience them. Some people don't have any like that uh lived energetic embodiment of what a chakra is so Mm -hmm. it feels too like separate Mm -hmm. from from day to day Mm -hmm. you know unless you're doing energy work yeah it's like weird hair and to me it's like how do you stay in balance so even that moving through the season we start to notice changes and everything but Mm -hmm. you know that's how i tune into the chakras day to day is like all right what's got me going today how do i feel you know, mm. what's going on in my body or my mind, my mental state. Right. And then that gives me, you know, an inclination of like what perhaps is kind of gearing towards imbalance within my energy centers. It's interesting that you bring that up because as far as like checking in or if that's the phrase you used, it's not the chakras for me. I don't really wake up. That's not at the forefront mm-hmm, to like right. do a scan of them in my day, really, unless I hear the word or right. read it somewhere. It's, yeah. it's not on the forefront. Like, so yeah, it'd be interesting to kind of keep in, that in mind. I'm like, oh, an hour into my morning, where am I feeling? Yeah. You feel dull today? Yeah. Do you feel angry today? Mm. You know, well, well I mean, and I do it. I feel worried. Is, yeah, exactly. Like all of those, always, yes. like the same way that we tune into like the Enneagram and other, you know, modalities mm-hmm. in the sense, like we could definitely mm. gear it back yeah. to the energy centers of the body. <laughs> I do it prior to tuning in. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you start Kundalini practice class, whatever, and you take a few deep breaths and suspend the breaths and then exhale the breaths and suspend the breaths out before you do Ong Namo Guru Dev Namo. So in that moment of like inhale deep, hold the breath, I'm like tuning into each of the energy centers, usually with like a quick check in. Like, do I feel grounded? Do I feel creative? Do I feel powerful? Mm -hmm. Do I feel heart centered? Do I feel clearly able to express myself? Like, do I feel expressive? Do I feel intuitive? Do I feel open? Man. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask later what sort of mantra or idea is associated mm-hmm. with each of the chakras. I'm not there yet as far as like, I can't do that without having read it, having to read it somewhere. You were like, bam, 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 bam. Like, I feel safe. Yeah. That would be. We have a sticker for that. We do. do we really? Yeah. Like, nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> your phone my, case yeah my phone case or oh, you can that. actually not even stick it you just oh. slide it in between yeah, yeah, yeah. um let's go i mean so i'm not there yet i am slowly like i'm noticing what i'm learning and retaining i can i can name all of the astrology signs mm-hmm. in a row like in, in order. order nice i mean it takes a while because i have to be like <laughs> oh do you want to hear like a fun this is a fun scorpio season preseason activity matt and i have been going on graveyard walks oh yes <laughs> every day yes and we were walking through the graveyard one day and just right. looking at people's birth dates that are mm-hmm. on stones. And I'm like, okay, this birthday, what's their what's their sign? Yeah. And he's just like rattling oh, okay, them him. off. Like, oh, that's uh, great. It's, it's good to keep me on my toes. Keep you on your toes. Yeah. Yeah. Stay sharp. Get to say yep. hi to yep. everyone as well. Just and a little lightning round. Do a little. Mm-hmm. I know you don't want to walk on a day like today, but this would be a great day. It would be a, uh, it would be just a great I, day. I just have to put my coat on. You know, the best thing is... is um, you know, there's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. Yeah. So mm. I've got my rain jacket in my car. 
because that helps me be less miserable. There you go. <laughs> yep. I agree. <laughs> it's like, yep. yeah, if we're going to get to do these things, then be as comfortable as you That's can with saying. it. And that is definitely yeah. a luxury. That a raincoat and I boots have to be able to do go that. a long way. I'm trying. It's, it's going to happen. We're going to walk in yeah. whatever's gross outside. I've got it. My son and I do that. My my youngest, he's 12, and we'll go up and we'll um, just, there's a church right above our hill mm. um, where I live, and we'll go visit Mama and Pop Up and, you know, some others that we know and just take a stroll through through the graveyard. Love I love it so much. Although there's a difference between graveyard and cemetery. There is. Right? Which, which way is that? I don't remember. If it's not a church, I it's think... a cemetery. If it's church adjacent, if it's yes. affiliated I think. with the church. It's a yeah. cemetery. Mm-hmm. It's a cemetery. And if it's not, it's a graveyard. Feel free to right. write so in. So, for and example, <laughs> where we walk, there's actually two separate ones. There is across on the street, a, a side of the road. One mm-hmm. is the Groton Rural Cemetery. Mm-hmm. I guess that answers that question because it's yep. not associated with a church. But the one across the street is like St. Anthony's. Also, cemetery. It's a cemetery. Yeah. Maybe it's a the location then, because not maybe graveyard yeah. has to be maybe by a church or place of oh. worship like that or cemetery is not because there's yeah, no church. one or the other we yeah. can't well yeah but yeah well you know hold on i got my phone right activity. here i can you go. do you That's, can i'll be on answer question know. duty but um <laughs> i um but yeah and you know when i think about engaging with the chakras and things like going outside and going for walks like this is immediate grounding this is oh yeah this is a grounding activity it is a root chakra activity mm-hmm. it can enable us to keep that space clear and flowing like i don't personally i have never experienced a closed chakra Mm -hmm. so people are are constantly saying this like my my this chakra is closed or Mm -hmm. my that chakra is closed usually in relation to their hearts Mm -hmm. in relation to their third eye or their crown and um i I push back a little bit on that. Like these are, these are energy centers of, of spinning vibration. Mm -hmm. They're not doors. (laughs) Right. It's Mm -hmm. not an iron. And I think that it could not be spinning as freely. Totally. The way that you tune in as you just shared kind of like that alignment and that perhaps visualization, um, that check-in, I sometimes refer to it as like a garden hose. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a kink in the garden hose, Mm -hmm. You're still going to get a little bit, but it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to be as free flowing. Yep. So that's what, like, when I envision, I'm like aligning my spine as if it were, you know, garden Stretching hose. out the yeah, garden exactly. Yeah, exactly. To yep. free up any kinks to mm-hmm. allow that energy to move freely. Well, so like that, that just lights me up. Yeah. <laughs> it just lights me up, literally. <laughs> Do people, well, first thing, a the difference between cemetery and graveyard is location. Cemeteries yes. are usually located in neighborhoods while graveyards are often found on or near church property. Oh, okay. okay. So okay, we that. are walking through In cemeteries. Cemetery. Mm-hmm. That. And do people I've all, I've heard the phrase like you have a chakra like blocked or closed. But it was when I started paying attention to you, honey, teaching where mm-hmm. you said I don't subscribe to that. I don't think it's blocked. I think it maybe slower down. Do a lot of people still like in your reading or anything like listening to people speak still refer to them as blocked. Is that like a thing still? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that it's like, for lack of a better word, like it's a layman's way Mm. of explaining what they perceive to be true about a particular energy center, that it is closed or blocked. Mm. Um, and you know, so, so like Sabrina said, I love the, the hose analogy. That's great. I also just think that it's like things can get kind of sticky. So mm-hmm. when when I'm doing energy work and energy workers all have different ways of experiencing these things too. Like for me, the energy body feels like um, when it's in its subtlety, it feels kind of like a fog or like a like a steamy smoky type of energy like it's there you can feel it but it it moves it moves when you move and then the more dense or or slow moving uh energy center is the stickier it feels to me so it actually starts to feel like um sometimes like a cobweb like Mm. yeah that's very cobweb cobwebby yeah and then when it's super sluggish it feels like cotton candy like it's actually like sticking to Mm -hmm. things 
and right. and then it sticks to itself and everything kind of just gets like stuck you know think about if you touch if you keep touching cotton candy it like <laughs> gets like more sticky on itself even yeah but it's not it's still not closed it's right. it's a airy ethery type of material what a great visual i love that um so yeah so like it's it's that but i just think that we don't talk about these things a lot right so it's like we don't have a vernacular no. so it's like mm. but any it, anytime someone's talking about their like i would say mostly heart right mm-hmm. like my heart feels pain i've experienced a heartbreak i don't trust i i am very suspicious and very uh closed off from other people then translates to people saying my heart chakra is closed mm. and it's not mm. um and probably none of your chakras are closed probably what is likely happening is that your brain is making right. up stories about other yeah. people and you are creating an energetic barrier between yeah, yourself it's and an others. imbalance yes yeah. it's an imbalance rather than like mm. yeah open and closed right. yeah is it moving freely mm. you know yeah sometimes we are so quick to put like a another label on something instead of just like focusing on what yeah. it is well and also it seems weird that you would want to label like use the word stuck blocked or unmoving mm-hmm. on yourself like you don't have to right like, why that use why choose those feel words empowering. To the, right i yeah. mean it certainly doesn't you know helping the situation along it's not conducive to like movement it's like stuck blocks as far as as far as like you know well, you have slow. to you have to think about where people are in their healing journey too you mm-hmm. know like sometimes when it comes to matters of heartbreak in particular people are still in the part of that grieving process that they aren't able to Mm. feel like they have agency or choice around that, Mm. you know? So like if you don't believe that you have agency and choice and free will around what has happened to you, you're still going to use phrases that are out of your control, out of your, like, Oh, this thing is, it's closed. Mm -hmm. Uh It's just closed for business. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. I showed up at the store closed, you know, (laughs) as opposed to, I am creating this barrier to protect myself because I don't mm. want to feel that again because then you have to yeah. address the fact that you have some agency here. And it kind of leans into that sense of like, I'll use myself, for example, where I could never speak in public before. So, mm. you know, we would say like that's throat chakra, right? Yeah. Mm. That's throat energy. Uh, do some work around that. We're really, if we dive into it and I ask myself, well, Why? Like, what do I feel at that time when I go to speak and Mm. I can't? Like, the words just don't come out. For me, in my experience, that has more to do with the lower realm, Mm -hmm. like the lower chakras, you know, the lower triangle. And when I say lower, I don't mean less. It's just Mm -hmm. a different vibration, you know, between the lower, the heart, and and the upper. Well, if you are standing up. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Literal location. (laughs) Yeah. The three first chakras are the lower triangle of the body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me, I found that in order to vocalize, uh, to me, it was a Mm fear-based. And that is the lower realm. So I had work to do with that sense of feeling safe of being yeah. seen that I, I am. And you asked before, like, you know, each one has like a mantra. Mm. So that's also great to tune into. So I would do some work with like, I am, mm-hmm. you know, right. that that's I am mantra or chakra, I feel right. safe. Mm-hmm. Like I'm up in front of a crowd and like, I feel safe. I don't feel like anyone's out to judge me mm. or judge myself. Those were the things that were really coming up for me when I would go to use and speak and speak and use my voice. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just tuning into that too, how they could relate to one another. And, you know, sometimes we have some most times I can bring it back to lower work. Most of the time, yeah. most of the time, yep. lower work, um, you know, to, you know, we say raise that vibration in a sense. That's so cool. I never would have like, because, I mean, the, the great example is the throat chakra with the speaking, right? So mm-hmm. if you have trouble speaking or using your voice, you think, oh, clearly this one. But it's like, oh, why is that not working? Maybe fear. And that's a totally different one. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just thinking, like, oh, do, are you having trouble creating and you think it's cerebral? Like, mm-hmm. you think it, like you're yeah. out of ideas or, like, actually, that could be more of the sacral. Second. And that's sacral. really, yes. yes. <laughs> and that's wonderful. Like, if you don't, if you don't, if you're not feeling that creative energy, like, bring it down one. Mm-hmm. Is it because 
I am believing I'm not good enough for this mm. or I'm not this or that. If you could kind of tune into the why of it, oftentimes for me, it relates to, you know, one or two notches, mm -hmm. you know, below mm. yeah. in, in that sense. That's so cool. So it's like that foundation building from the ground up. We don't want to just be like up here in the ether <laughs> and our crown chakra. I mean, I do. <laughs> but... <laughs> But in that sense of, you know, Nothing's getting done in the we, crown chakra. we have to be, we have to be balanced. And so that's where if we go back to that, you know, morning check-in or anytime mm. check-in, like I'm, you know, I'm angry, <clears throat> those kind of things, or I feel sad. And then we ask ourselves why for me, most times it relates to something previous to that. And then well, once I tune into that, it can amplify that, yeah. that, that center. And the three lower chakras the first second and third chakra correspond with the three great human yeah wounds mm. that most of us so walk going with. up it's the root so mm -hmm. that would be the fear of being right. abandoned or alone yeah and then that's stability yep solar plexus no, no. sacral sacral you sacral. just said it yeah i just you had, had it. it and then yeah i, I did I so said this, I guess myself you know so the second chakra the sacral chakra um is about that i'm worthy mm. i'm i'm yeah. good enough right so when we start to have creative blocks because sacral chakra is all about like creation um artistic abilities mm -hmm. sex uh all of those if you have yeah sensuality yep. your creativity dense energy in that area it might be related to that core wound of i'm unworthy i'm not good enough and our right. third chakra uh, being that powerhouse potentially the the seat of our you know i mean your pranic pump is there mm -hmm. in traditional chinese medicine it's your hara like this is such a powerful center unless you don't experience that empowerment and that can often come from a a feeling that like you're never doing enough that, that you can't actually do enough and yeah. so you get kind of burnt out you can get adrenal fatigue mm -hmm. um so there's like Which physiological things they each match with an emotion mm -hmm. they match with the physical body the so like if system. you're having you're having liver you know you can go to where that correlates or yeah. you know reproductive organs you know where where does that lie yeah mm -hmm. yeah so also for, I don't know if mantra is the right word. Yeah. Um, Seed but mantras. What? Seed mantras. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. it like, so for the root chakra, the lowest one, it would be I am? Oh, is that would be like a, a mantric phrase that you yeah. use. Yeah. And yep. they, they, they change as they go up. Yep. Um, and the sacral being I feel. I feel. I feel. And then solar plexus, I do. Yep. Yeah. Nice. When we're on retreat, a lot of times... Um, I will lay out these phrases that take you through the chakras mm. uh, either on the floor mm -hmm. or on the walls of the room that we're in. And a way that we get everybody to learn everyone's names is you'll say like, I am Jeannie. I am excited. Mm. I am Jeannie. I feel nervous. Yeah. I am Jeannie. Oh, I cool. feel, you know, I do um, yoga like, and you mm -hmm. move through these statements. Look at you. You are just a born teacher. Look at that. <laughs> it's just such what? a natural way to learn. Yeah. Because we all experience these uh, these feelings or more than feelings. We all have these thoughts. And so it, it's a great way to move through. And it's like, oh, you're also learning about the energy centers of the body. I mean, you think it's when just... you're hearing that person say their name. That's seven yeah. times. Yeah, right? that certainly you. does you think help. It's just like, <laughs> I think it's a simple icebreaker. But We're then, just doing the chakras so first you're, night. You're zipping up through the chakras uh -huh. and knowing all the things. That's amazing. And you learn so much about each other's yeah. Yeah. perceptions of like ourselves. Like this is you're 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 sharing a lot when yeah. you tell people <laughs> uh, what you love and what you and I think speak. It's beautiful to see where everyone is at on their journey. Because mm -hmm. I mean, any answer is a valid answer that you feel. We did and have so a student one uh, one retreat say the same word for every single chakra. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he was like people. one of two men. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of a student. I am nothing. I feel nothing. I do nothing. <laughs> 
I love nothing. Why are you here, bro? Like that. It, it's, I was just like, okay, okay. I'm learning. I'm actually still learning a ton about you right now. Props to you, honey. Because mm-hmm. when I see that level of obstinance, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you well, doing here? Well, it's a Come vulnerable on. exercise. It is. True, and but you're also- standing up in front of a room full of people that you have never met before. Mm-hmm. It is night one. And All right. And Who doesn't hate icebreakers? I but, mean, like, I don't even call it that anymore. But also, this person was not thrown into the back of a car and kidnapped they to might go have on retreat. They might have been. By whom? Spouse? Their spouse. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I still say, if you are going, you just got to <sighs> freaking What are we here to do? What are you here to do? Yeah. yeah. We I mean, all in that same sense, I think I heard, like, love. I am love. I feel love. I do love. Yep. People like, have done that, that one's before. beautiful. And in, in the same sense of, like, it is like dig a little deeper. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you really feel? Like, of course, I feel love. Well, I mean, I didn't um, need him to dig yeah. any deeper. I knew everything I needed to know in that right. moment Good with the you. way that he answered. Yeah. And and so I think like also just being in that teacher role, I can recognize that I've just asked what I have just asked of people. Right. And even though we say yes to these things, we are so far outside of our comfort zone mm-hmm in these scenarios very very often and and being on retreat like it's one of those things right where people get so curious kind of like yoga teacher training so curious they like want to do this Mm. right if you have any involvement in like yoga communities Mm -hmm. it's a bucket list thing i'm gonna do a yoga teacher training i'm gonna go on retreat on retreat and then they get there and they're like sweet baby Jesus, what did I <laughs> sign up for? I don't know, man. You have more compassion than I do. Because number one, how are you this far? How, how did you get on this plane without like talking to anyone about what type of shit would be expected? That's number one. Number two, you're a better person than I am. This is why I don't leave retreats. Because I would just be like, Yet. okay, who's the asshole? Do you think this is funny? Thank you. You would Go not. back to your room. You would not. So you're ready you, to participate. You would not because you also no, I wouldn't do that. feel that level of anxiousness in a stranger public speaking scenario. So just remember, you're mm. going to be in Guatemala in February. Mm. <laughs> well, I w- he- well, here's the thing though. We have been, we have been. Matt's going on retreat. <laughs> well, here's the thing. <laughs> well, you know what? Here's the thing. In all honesty, you know my level of comfort and I'm uh, willing to step beyond the comfort. Mm-hmm. And if you do not prep me with any sort of thing, we're like, we're going to do this thing. I'd really like you to participate. Here's what it is. Mm-hmm. Be ready for mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. If you blindsided me with something, knowing I might be uncomfortable, I would be forever for the day <laughs> so pissed off. I know. I and would be like so like everything. Uh, it would close every. Yeah. It would, the, it would the, create yeah. slowed energy. <laughs> oh, it <laughs> might. Not close. It might stop. <laughs> so where does that reside? I, I mean, I know that you're an Enneagram one. No, that, it wouldn't close. There would, yeah. It would like be temporary, just like it would close and then it open. Wouldn't it close? Yeah. And but you have to you have to remember, right? Like you have the luxury of me being your spouse mm-hmm. in this scenario. So right. I can tell you ahead of time. And I do my best on retreat, uh, honestly, to tell people this is what we're about to do. You wouldn't even have to say yeah. me the details. You could just say, well, you are going to participate in this workshop exercise mm-hmm. that is about this, and you will have to think, feel, do about this topic. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even need the, See, the actual think, lesson feel, plan. Do. He's already like... like mm-hmm. That's what I would need. Just a, a little primer to be like, here's what we're about sure. to do kind of thing. I, don't I mean, and the, that's trauma-informed teaching in yeah. a nutshell. Absolutely. Right. That's trauma-informed teaching. Like yeah. That just is. Like you, you give people a heads up, and you let them opt in or out around anything that's going on with also the reminder of like what are we here to do you right. know like yeah. you paid to be here <laughs> so you need to get out of this what you would like to get out of this and and that's an important aspect and i think that when when we ask people to step outside their comfort zone that's where growth happens and I that's mean, where that's the only place that growth happens place. we have to be able to <laughs> We have to be able to um, understand how many elements are outside the comfort zone at this time, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't I just reading about Vygotsky last night? This is so funny. Um, 
so there's educational theory, uh, psychological it's, theory. It's not that deep. That it's not that deep. <laughs> that is the zone of proximal development, is what it's called. And once and you hear it, you're going to be glad that you got to learn it from us without having to take a class. Mm. Take take a 15 week take class a, on a, the zone uh, of proximal development. Okay. Because once you hear it, you're like, that's I'll it. I'll be looking for that <laughs> email. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, so it's that you can. There is a. There's an area just outside of your comfort zone that you're still able to learn in before you get beyond that area and you move into fight or flight, fight, yeah. flight, freeze or faint. Right? I see that. I'm picturing circles. I got yeah, it. It's, yeah. It's the concentric. Yeah. You know, so you're just outside of your comfort zone and there's only like, so if you get bumped out because you're in a different country, mm. right out of your comfort zone, you get bumped out because you maybe haven't slept because you've been traveling for 36 hours. You get bumped out even more because you're in a room full of total strangers. Right. And then you get bumped out again because I'm like, let's say what our chakras are doing right now using feelings words, yeah. right? In front of all these people. So as a teacher, you have to go into scenarios recognizing like, what am I asking people to do? And where are they in space and time regarding that zone of proximal development because they might already be learning and growing mm. enough because again they just were on three flights to get somewhere right. Right. they were on a three-hour shuttle ride they're tired yeah. already you're out of your comfort zone if you're tired but right and you know i think it's good to know like you you did sign up for these things and like that's to be expected right so that's yeah. where we can also come into our practice and hopefully someone has some sort of practice prior in the sense of like, I know I'm going to be on a three, three hour flight. I know there's going to be a lot of people that's going to amp up my VADA. I'm going to feel this way. So I'm going to bring my earphones. I'm going to bring my safety blanket. I'm going like, what can I do to help mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. What can I right. do to help me you would, you <laughs> stay would hope in balance? I think that adults operating in the world would have their own bag of tricks that they know they could yeah. like, but that's what we're that's what we're here for yeah. too in the sense of like how do we do that i think that we're good I, at recognizing i think mm. travel there's a lot that goes into travel and i think that for some people it's it, it just all the planning all the organizing all of the packing the getting ready like that's it for them it kind of taps them out and mm -hmm. And we can just have compassion that like, maybe they're not like, what is my practice on this layover? They're mm -hmm. like, Jesus, yeah. I'm in this weird you know? place that doesn't have any comfortable seats anywhere. And the whole airport's under construction. You know, like there's just all right. these variables. There's yeah. a lot of things. Um, so yeah, you have to go into it knowing, knowing that. And, and so that is where my, my mind went with that particular student on retreat was just like, yep, this is where you are right yeah. now. This is why and, you're getting into heaven. And I'm I not. guarantee you will be in a different place in five days at the mm. end of this retreat. Right. Um, we could probably uh, do a fun experiment. Maybe we'll do this in Guatemala um, where we do that chakra check in at the beginning and then we do it oh, at the yeah. end before yeah, like a good closing idea. ceremony because things shift that quickly mm. they on do, yeah. a retreat and in, in Sangha together concentrated in that mm. way. So um, I, I, there's such little, there's just so little on this planet at this point in the teaching realm that I take personally or that I experience as like someone just being obstinate. Mm. Good um, for you. So I'm dead, dead serious because <laughs> I clearly have wounds around being a t former teacher still. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. I mean, to to meet that behavior, and I'm not even saying that that was obstinate or intentionally kind of like stompy maybe it was a little bit mm. maybe could he was been. doing maybe he was doing the best he could that day Do I always I, that took me 15 minutes to get to that <laughs> and you met that immediately with that yeah yeah i mean i do assume that all the time about everyone that's so good for um you. and they're it, doing their best and it is yeah. a practice and yeah. it doesn't happen instantly mm. it sometimes does take me 15 minutes to get there um but it's uh, and, and it's completely selfish. It's completely selfish. I feel better when I make that assumption. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's very easy to make it about me. Like, oh, you don't like right. this activity. You're you're not oh, going to yeah. be happy on this retreat. Like, right. you don't want me as a teacher. You know, like our mm. brains can just spin It just really out. spirals. Yeah. 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 Such a, it's exhausting. Nice. Can I make an observation? 
I don't know how insightful this is, but I was thinking about the throat chakra, mainly because sometimes when I drive to play golf in the morning, now for Breath of Fire, Mm -hmm. if I'm doing it properly, you're supposed to like do it with your eyes closed. Is that right? Eyes, third eye gaze. Sure. Okay. You don't have to. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Because sometimes I do it while I'm driving for like 10 to 15 seconds. I'm with you, Matt. She'll Ah! say no. (laughs) She'll say no. She'll tell tell Jessica no. But... (laughs) Uh, you get that right song that comes on and you're just like <laughs> mm. no, no no i was just doing it like i drive i hope that you're not closing your eyes though no no okay. no, no i'm driving okay, yeah literally driving yeah. so i just am, i'm thinking of like well how can i wake my body up mm-hmm. right and i sure. thought let's start moving energy up so yeah, i yeah. this is where i think of root chakra and i just like <clears throat> tighten it up and then uh-huh. mm-hmm. maybe 15 20 seconds just to like get things moving you have an enough Kafa, I'm going to actually delete that. Rewind. You have such little vata mm. that you can do that safely. Mm. That you're mm-hmm. unlikely to yeah. go into buzzing yeah. right. head like, space yeah. around it and now, feel like light floofiness coming yeah. in. Um, nice. That is not true. True. For everyone. That, okay. is, that is accurate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's concerned about me because I do have a lot of vata. You have a lot of vata, <laughs> but there's something that makes like for me, breath of fire is really grounding. I I understand mm. what it's doing energetically, but I don't know. For me, it's like this back to my root kind of thing. So I don't well, know. it is. It does bring you into yeah. third chakra. It brings you into your yeah. pranic pump. So. If you are feeling like it's just, just the pranium, like pranium yeah. while driving <laughs> is generally not really not, you know, what could be a better breath practice for you would be to breathe through your right nostril. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Where I was just going to say, if I'd start practicing Nadi Shodhana in while I'm driving, I will fall asleep. <laughs> 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 right. But probably not if you only... We're doing breath to just the right, oh, the right side. So yeah. I, I would just breathe through one of them. I yeah. would yes. switch between the two. Yeah. No, you just no. breathe through your right. Like the right one. Two. That one doesn't work right now. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's stuck. Well, I mean, and when you're not driving, like grab some tissues and yeah, really just Practice blast that, that right side with. With Breath of Fire. All right. I'll try it. <laughs> um, that wasn't even the observation. The one I was thinking about with throat chakra. Okay. Because sometimes what I've been doing is I will be, I will chant on the way or like, I like, like, cause there's a track of Tibetan meditation songs mm-hmm. and the last one is Om for like 15 minutes and mm-hmm. it's a very deep, like it's, it's, it's very deep and slow. It's like, Ooh, like that. Mm-hmm. So I'll do that in the car mm-hmm. and like, I'm thinking about. Like like when you get a, a lump in your throat or a frog yeah. in your throat when you're trying to speak. For me, is there any physiological reason why that happens? Like why does that – why do you feel that? Like the words don't start there. They maybe start in your brain. Mm-hmm. But the air to push the words out start about here. Mm-hmm. They come out of your mouth. There mm-hmm. are many things involved. Yeah. But usually when you can't speak or are afraid to speak, you get this thing right here. And you might start to cough that's, or you get that tingle in your throat. That's fascinating to me because uh, like yeah. that's where like the chakra resides, mm-hmm. right? So that's mm-hmm. another thing where I'm like, physiologically, that doesn't quite make sense to me. I don't know a lot about it, but why in that area of the body experience that energetic physical movement yeah. when the words and what you want to say happen all over the place? Mm-hmm. So that's when I was like, oh, shit, these chakras are real. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you feel that vibration. Yep. Not that and I that was That vibration a, shakes stuff up. A and doubter, but it was just, yeah. I thought of it, I'm like, there's, is there a reason why this happens? Like, yeah. it doesn't make sense to me. So I don't know. Um, you're looking at me like you think I'm cute. Well, I, I always think oh you're cute. Oh, my Did goodness. I make the, <laughs> well, sometimes I, I say like a thought I had. I'm like, I was thinking about this. And you're just like. Yeah. Well, so I, I mean, I'm thinking about more. So I don't know if it's like you stupid man. No, never. It's like um, I love 
that I just am in the middle of recording a work podcast and learning something about you that I didn't know, <laughs> which is that you're doing chanting pranayam all. and mantra in the car on well, the way to golf. golf. That's cutesy. Well, um, we, we, we got to get that handicap down, and I'm at my last resort. <laughs> season's almost anything, over. Anything we for wanna, a golf we, score. We, we you could get chant down. through all the chakras. We could, oh, I know. Could, if my ride mm-hmm. was that long, maybe I would. Shoot. I'm and sorry. so I was having a moment about that. I was also having, and then my brain went to... You were chanting in Mundalini mm-hmm. the last couple of weeks, yeah. um, and and how I've been going to yoga classes with you for thirteen years now. Jesus, and never have I ever no. seen you up to this point do public chanting. No, um, and then I went to that place of like this is this was like the first energetic thing that I experienced from Matt was how dense his throat chakra energy was. Mm. And, and it was so like obvious to me. And then you didn't really know anything about chakras at that point. No, zero. No. Um, and I could just feel like I could feel this concentration of energy going into his throat when he was trying to like communicate something when we were first seeing each other and working together <clears throat> that like wouldn't happen uh he he could express via text like yeah. his ability to text me something my thumb chakras were great. thumb chakras great wide open <laughs> well and your thumb your hand chakras your hands are an extension of your heart chakra oh for real yeah yeah oh man um what's it all out there huh so <laughs> <laughs> so i I had this experience. I'm like, well, how can I say to this man? He is going to think I'm just coconuts. Mm. <laughs> um, so I bought these two mm. stones mm-hmm. that were blue. Oh, nice. And then they had these white stripes. So it was soda light. So okay. white like threads through them um, that kind of looked like they were cracking open with light. Right. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to tell him that these are our communication stones. And <laughs> when he needs to communicate something that feels like it's hard mm. and he can't quite communicate it, he can just put the stone out mm-hmm. and I will be like, oh, what can we chat about? Right. Because you're first dating someone. Never do you ever really want to hear. Really nice exercise. Yeah. yeah. Good offering. Never do you yeah. want to hear. We need to talk. Right. <laughs> or I need to talk to you about something like yeah, you can immediately. Never a great way to chakra. start. <laughs> Instant root chakra. Fear. <laughs> They're going to leave me. Right, right. They're breaking up with me. It's not not good enough. It's not me. It's them. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, Right. Like, so (laughs) I gave him these. We each had these communications. It's funny because we all think that's in the head, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. But yeah. Okay. Communication. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I I was thinking about our communication stones and how we've been on this throat chakra journey together. (laughs) We have. <laughs> well, I think I've been on the journey. You've been just been like along for the ride. I've been, I mean, really. I'm just, you know, well, holding steady. They're both moving along. Well, I think the mantra of like, what are we here to do is helpful. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's just more of like, fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why Why do I care? Just I, mean, I don't care anymore. Like, right? that's the thing. It's like, for just lack be of a you. better phrase, like, I don't care. Like, anything that. Any concern I had that would prevent me from doing something, I'm like, eh, it's just stupid. And it's like right. if anyone has a thought, or if that's their thing. I mean, in regards, right. like oh yeah, chanting. as far as like, that's oh, their stuff, you know, is someone gonna think that my voice sounds X Y Z? Right. I don't. Yeah, yeah. No and that's where anymore. we could go back to, like I said in the beginning, like where else does that, you know, what does that stem from? Well, like, and that I core. don't care. Yeah. Um, when you know when we're talking about this in the context of healing and, I. Uh, peeling back layers and shedding things that aren't actually us and our old lessons that we've picked up along yeah. the way. Um, that I don't care anymore story and, and expression is actually experiencing our egos as tedious. Mm-hmm. It is the experience. <laughs> it is like, ah, this three-year-old is in my head again. Mm-hmm. And I'm yeah. so tired. I'm tired of hearing of you. listening to the like, whining that okay. this egoic mind yeah. is doing. And so I just don't care anymore. Yeah. It's, it's, and everybody gets there yeah. in their own time. So, so I, I be, And we can sway too. Right. Totally. There's definitely okay. like swaying ability there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, 
we learn, we unlearn, we do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So I became enlightened is what I'm hearing. No. Are you okay. sure? <laughs> no. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> well, thought, we're not going to go back to that. I thought I was pretty close. The uh, I think you had a moment. I think you've had a we yeah. all have our moments. And then you know, you learn, you unlearn, do it again. <laughs> we all got a psych. We got a psychic reading, like a channeled reading years what? and years ago. We Everyone did. on the team. Oh, I was thinking of a different one we had where you and I had one. Oh no, like, not that was a couple that was, years ago. That was so astrology. I think we need another one. Oh, that was astrology. astrology. I I've thought about that reading a couple times. The psychic reading. No, the one the astrology. With the astrology. The astrology. Can I say why? No. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> you don't know what I'm going to say. Well, why do you ask? This reaction. Well, I don't say know. It. Say We're it. over here. Because over here. <laughs> um, one thing that was said where like looking at you and I, as far as like the work we're doing or going to do or what we'd be really good at, something together. Mm-hmm. And we were sitting up in our bed on like a Zoom call with yep. this person. Mm-hmm. And she said something like, with the headboard the way it is and the w- how you were sitting, I just see like two thrones kind of thing. Mm, I love that. And I was just like, I think that's awesome because it's like yeah. if I do it, it leads me to the other thought, which I've had a million times. If I do anything worthwhile on this planet, it will be because you help me do it. Stop so, it. and I just, I just thought it was cool. And there's two other memories I have that I won't share. Okay. Um. <laughs> 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 I'm like, can you text it to me? <laughs> <laughs> I there's nothing like paying most certainly will. nothing like paying someone that's gonna put it in the description of this so go listen to this podcast and nothing check like, out the description <laughs> there's just nothing like paying someone to flirt with your husband uh during oh. a couple's reading oh i um i'm i'm with you now i am I'll, way too scorpionic for that yeah uh i mean you're looking at my chart <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you should You're know looking better. at the chart. Like you should know. You should know well, better. Well, that's the safety of Zoom. You know, there are miles <laughs> between us. Um, no, we we all had these like channeled readings from like a medium, and the medium told Matt that he didn't have an ego. That's right. I do remember that now. I was like, seriously, how is this helpful? <laughs> Like, the head on this man I'm will like, just just get bigger, I gotta, bigger. I gotta look at your chart. I'm like, he does. Sh- they were like, he doesn't have any egoic work to do, and I was like, <laughs> awesome, thank thanks, you, thanks. great, thanks. Um, okay. However, I I recently um, have been. <laughs> Matt, are you going to need your inhaler? You're oh, worrying me. I feel, you know what? No. Where is your inhaler? It's speaking? in my pocket. Okay. 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 <laughs> See, we look out for each other here okay. at, at Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good Lord. What were we going to say? Um, but I've been noticing, you know, since you have started meditating twice a day, mm-hmm. doing transcendental meditation twice yep. a day, that a lot of things um, energetically are shifting for you within your field your chakra field within oh, really um yeah and it's not i mean uh, an example is the chanting in the middle of class right and so is it right like here's the question is it shifting because you're getting to that place of i just don't care anymore you know you're, yeah. you're finding your ego tedious which is also usually a direct result of regular meditation hmm. of a variety. It doesn't necessarily need to be a, a specific meditation and regular meditative practices, let alone twice a day for 20 minutes of meditation. It's a lot mm-hmm. of meditation. It really is. I mean, when I hear anyone else speak of trying meditation, any kind, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, one podcast, these guys were talking about trying to do it. For like three minutes. He's like three minutes. Yeah. And I was like, three minutes? Once a day? That's oh, wow. like... Over before it began, you know, before it even started. Yeah, you're just, you're just. And then I reflect on how their experience in mind is very different. And mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with three minutes. And, no. You know, it's, but it also. Yeah, and somewhere. at the same time, like three minutes, I could drop into a three minute mm-hmm. meditation, having meditation experience. And I could yeah. be where some people yeah. are. It takes, you know, right. it just, we're all, you yeah. know, different. I so. have found that too with TM or doing it's it. Like, I found like. Some because sometimes I I'm bad and I kind of open my eye and peek at the clock to count down <laughs> to see how many minutes left. I'm like, oh, I hate when I do that. But then I'm like, oh, you know what? I could just if I just 
not worry about it. Stick to the mantra and not worry about yeah. it. I can be in that state. It just and, relatively and it, quickly, quickly and the, the, the time, time just, left. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think when I hear the, like, in this sense of I don't care mm-hmm. and, like, what it relates to, I, what I hear is, um, like, acceptance. Mm-hmm. To me, it's like, yeah, it's because oftentimes I think we hear I don't care and it's like, oh, they don't. They don't give a shit, right, <laughs> like, right, yeah. um, which sometimes is the thing. But in this saint, in this sense, it's that sense of it feels liberating. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. in yoga, it's called dispassion. Yeah. Mm. And when we hear the word dispassion, we think that that's a bad thing because we uh, it's a it's like a trickiness to the translation. Right. So when we're thinking about the two wings of yoga and there's practice, there's the passion that you want to have the 100% engagement, Mm. what are we here to do? The dispassion isn't a negative thing. It's holding everything in an open palm, not being attached to anything, including a story about your voice, how other people experience it. Are you to this, to that, not enough this, not enough that. Um, So like that is a direct result of regular practices as well. Um, But it's also a, you know, a signifier of like, you're, you're doing a practice a couple of times a day. And I would argue whatever that practice is. And um, you, your energy fields are going to shift because of that. You are dipping into the part of yourself that is eternal, that is um, infinite, that is the consciousness that is within all of us. Like you've, like you've just taken a really, really deep dive into a, a lake mm-hmm. that feels vast and Mm -hmm. um calm and so within that space our our vibrations even out and our energy centers even out Mm -hmm. because we're less likely to be in sympathetic nervous system we're less likely to be overwhelmed by external stimuli Mm -hmm. so we're able to our our energy centers are able to align like that yeah that that hose that golden thread the golden golden thread thread. the 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 golden hose the (laughs) golden (laughs) <laughs> Maybe I'll use a different word. Maybe not the golden hose. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> great, we're what is we're happening all 15 now? Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, and I've noticed it from me. Really? You know, well, you know, it's, you know, huge shifts in you in the last four months, five months. Really? Mm-hmm. It's interesting because I mean, Sabrina may remember this. There was a questionnaire that you fill out on your days at the TM training. Yeah, and I remember yeah. one like, yeah. has anyone made a comment if they noticed something different about you? I'm like, mm. I've been doing, oh, I did okay. this three times, so not yet. <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, I remember thinking like, oh, it's I a wonder. great reflection. That's really nice to go right. back like, to I because wonder... we often don't see these things or we don't relate them to mm. just as so we hard to see made ourselves. this correlation. Right. It's so so hard like, to see ourselves. I have yeah. no idea. I don't feel vastly right. different enough where someone else would notice. Mm-hmm. But that's kind of cool to hear. And your animal magic is super heightened lately. Um, Love animal so, magic. So, you know, on the... Oh, we're talking about two different things. What? Okay. Not... You mean about seeing animals? Yeah. Okay. I th- my brain went somewhere else. Animal magic? Yeah. What? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about yesterday particularly when we went on our walk? Um, I, I, It has been frequent since you started having a twice a Got day some practice senses. like mm. so spider senses there there's, were there's sometimes where i'm like what does seeing these animals mean or there represent? was yeah. a, so a lot of bird magic mm-hmm. there um you you've seen hawks repeatedly yeah mm-hmm. yep okay. very close to you and on the ground at times yeah there was one i was playing golf <clears> there was a, 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 a hawk or a falcon it was kind of small Might but it was on there. the ground yeah and i thought it was like wounded or injured but as soon as Just i passed chilling. It got up and flew into the tree, and there were like two other ones. Chilling. Yeah. Mm. Um, but see, you tune into those things. Like, as you become yeah. more aligned, in a sense, we become more perceptive. Our intuition is heightened. Mm. And that's when, like, I guarantee these things probably were happening. We just yeah. were so much in our head and in our physical body, right. in, in our thoughts, all of those things that were not necessarily open to seeing what is right in front of us Mm -hmm. well and as you work those kinks out in the hose (laughs) and things are flowing you know and and just for clarity's sake 
we're not operating in the sense that we want energy to continuously flow upward. Right. The energy needs to then spiral back down. And it is actually a spiral. It, mm-hmm. it spirals up and then it spirals back down and it spirals back up. And it's this continuum of movement and energy. And, um, and you want to be able to direct it and have power around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if there are less kinks in the hose and the energy is flowing, you are going to be able to be more perceptive, tuned into your intuition and just paying attention to things that, you wouldn't have necessarily wouldn't have necessarily drawn your attention before i always tell the story of uh francine when she first started doing regular kundalini practices like and she was practicing twice a day at that point she had a like a morning practice and an afternoon practice they were short Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah short um and she texted me and was like (gasps) are the trees always this green? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was like, yes, they Mm -hmm. are. She's like, I don't think they are. I don't think they are. There's something different with my eyes. But, you know, like your perception shifts. And so you have had all these animal encounters. And And two yesterday. Two Mm -hmm. yesterday. A great blue heron and a fox. A huge fox as we were walking in the graveyard. I love that. Which, you know... Mischief is a foot. Yeah, magic. Magic, magic, is, magic a foot. is a foot. Well, and if you know, we're here talking about the chakras, you can be very simplistic, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just because something is simple doesn't mean that it isn't profound. So very simplistic. Pay attention to the colors that you're drawn to. Pay mm-hmm. attention to the colors that show up. Mm. And here we are in fall. We mm-hmm. talked about October being just yeah. the bestest. There's a beautiful the bestest. tree. When on the golf course when I play and it's just over the weeks playing, it's like, oh, it's green, but it's starting to be yellow. That's so beautiful like, that you can, oh, that you notice red. those. And yeah, because like, life is happening. All red, life so is changing. Life is shifting. Yeah. And if, you know, we're not, if our eyes are not open and open, <laughs> double open, then we just miss it. Yeah. Like, now it's just vibrant red. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, if you had to pick a color to associate with October, what would you pick? Orange. Orange. Orange, yeah. 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 So that's sacral chakra, that's mm-hmm. second chakra, that's creativity, that's intimacy, sexuality, like mm-hmm. all those really beautiful so things. I wear all these, you know, to me, you've got all the these colors. These all on. have all energetic properties to them. And I notice that I switch between if I'm wearing on my left side, my right side, mm. you know, and I notice I sometimes take one off. I'm like, no, I just feel like that's not it today. I mean, for myself. But to me, it's also a represent representation of the chakras. I did and, notice. You know, that. notice on this side, I just have. To me, this is like my upper realm on my left side today, and mm. this side here is. You know, I snuck in that blue one, so that's a little off there. But I yeah. did notice. It I makes, looked, I'm like, it oh, makes there's sense a to me. Throat, heart. Exactly. Oh, look at that. Yeah, we're all, we're all looking at Sabrina's bracelets, by the way. For people <laughs> who are listening, they're like, "What? <laughs> um, I can't see." Yeah, lots of lots of beads on today. Yeah. What time you got, Matt? Uh, what, twelve thirty-two. Okay. All right. All right. Speaking of transcendental meditation. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I feel like this. Uh, should I have be a, day two today. Should be a topic for the team. I think once, once everyone, yeah. everyone is everyone's done, trained, we'll talk after about a couple it. Weeks. Let yeah, yeah. Do with practice. I think that would be really cool. Well, and it sounds like it's important to notice each other's experiences mm-hmm. with practices because. I take it for granted that you are experiencing these shifts that I'm seeing in you Mm. and maybe, and I only see you like every so often. So I'm like, Hey Matt. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. What have you been studying lately? What have you been doing? (laughs) Like, what have you been doing? How many foxes have you seen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's cool. Be playful with it. Yeah. Be playful with with it. And just, it's like, if you don't notice, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just the best thing, like Jeannie said, is to be playful with it. Notice what colors you like to wear or what color you're drawn to that day. Or if, you know, you have a meeting coming up and, you know, y- you need that little extra grounding. Maybe mm. you wear red or maybe you wear blue for your throat. Maybe you wear a bracelet. I don't know. You know, and, still haven't gotten red shoes for school. And it's like there's also meditations and, mm. you know, Kundalini meditations and much other movements and practices that help to keep everything moving and keep everything spinning. And, you know, first it starts with noticing mm. without judgment, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working on unkinking that hose. Mm-hmm. Kink the awesome. barn hose. Let it, it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. I love it. 
Well, I mean, maybe TM won't be next week, but I think it'll be in the upcoming weeks. Probably. But yeah. Give us a give us a little bit of time yeah. with that. Practice. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, for the Chakra episode. We're here. For Wi Fi, Ithaca or Wi Fi. This is Matt. This is Jeannie. This is Sabrina. Thanks everyone. Bye. Ooh, ooh, ooh.